my line. Brought to you by Suppo Stockings, the beautifully sheer stockings that look as good as they feel. And now, let's all play What's My Line? And now, live from New York, let's meet our What's My Line panel. First, the delightful star of stage and television, Miss Arlene Francis. And now a very entertaining spy from I've Got a Secret, the droll and witty Henry Morgan. On my left, New York City's new first lady, the wife of our mayor, Mrs. John V. Lindsay. Our family's favorite source of fun and jokes, Mr. Bennett Surf. <laughs> Mrs. Lindsay, it's my chance to say that I think your husband's going to be about the greatest mayor we've had in this town in many, many years. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. And if our, if our panel moderator seems a bit skittish tonight, he's had a rather tough day. Up at Lenox Hill Hospital, he had a suspended nurse for three days because he caught her without gauze. Uh, oh. John Charles Daly. <laughs> I don't know how it feels to let one of those loose Bennett and just hear nothing but a moan. Tell me, how does it feel? <laughs> Mrs. Lindsay, may I say that we are much honored to have the first lady of this great city of New York Thank with you, us. Mr. Thank you, and with his honor in the control room, you're on your metal, so uh, we'll try to give you something to play with tonight. I think we've got some very interesting contestants, and Henry, good to see you, sir. Visited good to you see you, John. A little while ago, and I hope you have as much fun with us as I had with you all, and I've got a secret. Uh, we've got some very interesting occupations, as I said. We'll also have a famous mystery guest before my friends on the panel a little bit later in the program. But right now, let's meet our first contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Radford. Du Bois, right, sir? Yes. Mr. Du Bois, where are you from? Yazoo City, Mississippi. Yazoo City in Mississippi. Yes. Well, it's nice to have you with us, and may I present our panel, Mr. Du Bois. Now, if you'll join me over here, sir, we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. We can tell you that Mr. Du Bois is self-employed and deals in a product. And we will begin the general questioning with uh, Arlene Francis. Mr. Du Bois, is it a useful product? Yes. Is it a product that I might use? Yes. Is it a product that I could hold in my hand? Yes. Is it now or has it ever been alive? Yes. Let me just register one thought with you before we go on. You ask, Please. is it a useful product? And here I don't want to mislead you. If you are strictly thinking of a utilitarian concept, then we would say probably no, or give you a, a qualified answer anyway. But you go on on that basis. Thank you, John. Uh, is the product at the time you are dealing with it alive? Yes. Is it a product that one might see around the home? Yes. Is it... Um, Four-footed? Yes, ma'am. Uh, is it a domestic animal? No. I guess we'll have to have a small conference. I'd like it domesticated if it's around my house. <laughs> You've got one domesticated animal around here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think, to be absolutely fair, and Mr. Du Bois agrees with me, that... Um, we would, we would say, yes, it is domesticated, i.e., it is, you know, you know part of uh, 
a reasonable household or farm operation, or mm -hmm. uh, at least it's... A, is it an animal that has a uh, furry coat? No. No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Morgan. It's um, four-footed and it's smooth. <laughs> and uh, it's domesticated. And it's around the house, but you didn't seem to find much value in it. Um, is it... Do people who have one of these... Oh, there's a nifty question. Would people be likely to have only one? Of could. it. Could. Them. Could. Mm -hmm. could. Could. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, let's try it this way. If I had one, would I get another one, do you think? I would hope so. <laughs> Start with the one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would want to make a set. It, would you say that the people who buy this buy it more uh, almost like a, as a hobby or to be different? Because it doesn't sound like a usual kind of pet. Well, you can't answer that yes or no, can you? It's a little hard, Henry. I think with Mr. Du Bois's permission, we would agree that you could put it in the kind of classification of hobby, yes. Wouldn't you say so, Mr. Du Bois? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, is this animal ever eaten? No. Uh, I'm in a very difficult position here. I specifically, no, but we would have to um, agree that in the whole area of this, quote, animal, close quote, yes. Would you agree with that? Yes. Okay, let's um, uh, try for size. Is it uh, about so big? No. That's two down at eight to go, Mrs. Lindsay. Uh, is this animal, when you say you'd have it, uh, you'd own one, would you necessarily keep it in the house, or would, might you have it outdoors? Well, would, yeah, would you have it outdoors rather than in the house? No. No. Three down and seven to go. You see, you shouldn't ever take counsel from Ben and Sarah. I said you had to put it in a way to get yes or no. Uh, Mr. Du Bois, if it's in the house, would it be allowed to wander around the house without a string or chain attached to it? No. Four down and six Couldn't to go. Couldn't free, in other words. No, you would not let it. You, you're, you, the tendency would be not to let it free. Miss Francis? For the most part, then, would one keep this animal in a cage? No. Five down and five to go, Mr. Oh, Morgan. Now, <laughs> this is an animal. Yeah. Yes. And you don't keep it in a cage, but you don't let it wander around. <laughs> I'm just talking to myself for a minute here. Do you tie it? You do tie it up. No. No. Six down and four to go, Mr. Lindsay. <laughs> <coughs> Would this animal uh, be generally considered, you generally see it maybe in a zoo originally? No. Nope. Seven down and three to go, Mr. Surf. Uh, can we eliminate the dog family from our questioning? Yes, sir. Can we eliminate the cat family from our yeah. questioning? Yes, sir. Uh, can we eliminate the rodent family from our question? Yes, sir. Is it larger than the ordinary sized dog? No. no. Eight down and two to go, Miss Francis. I think we'd better just get this down, uh, if I may repeat. It has no fur, but it has four feet. And it's not in the dog family or the cat family or the rodent family. And you don't keep it in the cage. And you don't keep it on a lead. And yet it doesn't go around the house of its own volition. And it isn't in my family either. That isn't in your family. Boy. Do people in New York have these? Yes. <laughs> they just didn't let me in on it, I think. Uh, does it do anything? Yes. Is there anything entertaining about it? Yes. I would say yes. It, 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 if you had it, you would certainly would so. want to show it to your, uh, you know, friends, friends and visitors, and they would, we'd be sure, be amused. But how do you show it to them? Obviously, you can't catch it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give you one minute more. Are we way off the track? Well, I would think that's a pretty good All way right. to put it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did I, did you answer earlier that you cannot hold it in your hand? No, we said you could hold it in your you hand. You said you couldn't. You could. You could hold it in your hand. Mm -hmm. yeah. Therefore, it's a very small animal? Yes. 
Uh, is it so small that one could call it a bug of some kind? No. No, no, you're the only one who's being bugged around here tonight. That's nine down and one to go, Mr. Morgan. Is it, is it anything like a frog? Is it a member of the frog family? No, is it anything like a frog? <laughs> no. Yeah, well, you are very generous. Mr. Du Bois says he'll give you a qualified yes on that. All right, all right. Now, this... That's I'll tell you in a minute. <laughs> but we have a cup. Is it like a turtle? You may have 15... Oh, a what? A turkey? Oh, turtle. Good. A who? <laughs> Thank you. That's absolutely Thank you. right. And I think, actually, we'll throw this over just for good fun. Congratulations, Mrs. Lindsay. Congratulations, Henry, because it was a tough one. Mr. Du Bois raises and sells turtles on the Du Bois uh, turtle farm in Yazoo City, and uh, they ship about a million turtles a year, a half a million alone to um, uh, Woolworths, you know, for, the, for pets. Yeah. They're all, all pets. And we, uh, we really had them stuck. You, your generosity gave us away. <laughs> and I must say, Mr. Du Bois is a member of the House of Representatives of the Mississippi State Legislature. He is also a Green Beret. He's a major commanding a National Guard unit. <laughs> such as and, uh, he has a new distinction. And, and we raise catfish also. And he raises catfish also. That's the <laughs> other distinction. Thank you very much, sir. It was great Thank fun. I hope you enjoyed it. Contestant for you in just a moment after this word. And now another contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? <laughs> Christina. Christina. Vote, right? Just to show you what an awful thing habit can be, I nearly said to you, is it Miss or Mrs., but I'll take it back. <laughs> so, Miss Vote, where are you from? McPherson, Kansas. McPherson, yes. Kansas. Very nice to have you with us. Miss Vote, may I present our panel? And now, if you'll join me over here, we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. we can tell you that Miss Vote is salaried and deals in a service, and we'll begin the questioning with Mrs. Lindsay. Uh, Miss Vote, do you, would I enjoy using your service, or would I, no, excuse me, would I come to you to use your service? No. No, not specifically to her, no. That's one down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. Christina, do you work for a profit-making organization? <laughs> yes. Would the organization be sort of in your family, possibly? No. Two down a date to go, Miss Francis. When one has your service, Miss Vote, would one have it in one's home? Yes. Uh, do you uh, look after something in your job, Miss Vote? No. Three down no. and seven to go, Mr. Morgan. Do you, I, uh, what you do is part time, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I would say Miss Vote is in the fifth grade of the Galva Grade School in Galva, Kansas. We'll tell you that. <clears> hmm. <throat> um, well, I'm trying to think, you know, what do you do mm. after school? That, that uh, a girl like that would do. Do you, do you... I forgot, this is a, was this a salaried service? Yeah. You, um, do this for men and women? Yes. And do you do it for groups of men and women? Yes. Then you go to where they are. No. No. That's four down and no. six to go, Mrs. Lindsay. Miss Vote, do you provide entertainment in any way for yes. men and women? Uh, so do you do your form of service within a specific kind of building? No. I would, with your permission, say that we would agree that the service as it is offered might very well um, have a locus that was reasonably constant. Would you say that? So on that basis, you go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> that would bring 
Thank you, Christina. We never do. <laughs> Rather than no answer. Uh, people go and watch you do what you do. No, no. that is a no, misconception on the basis of the answers you have. All right. No, we've not we've not said that. So that if you are that well, is. Well, do your... people go and watch you do? No. You... no, they do not. Five down and five to go, Mr. Sir. Uh, Christine, you are then in some form of the amusement industry. Is that correct? Yes. Has it anything to do with television? No. Six down and four to go, Miss Francis. Do you play a musical instrument, Christina? No. Seven down and three to go, Mr. Morgan. You did say you did this uh, with large, uh, well, groups of men and well, women. Well, in a group, the, the, the inference that we wanted to leave with you, that certainly we would agree that there is a group identification with those who would be interested in the particular service which she has to offer, yes. What are you saying? I don't know. <laughs> you got to speak simpler to me. I, I, <laughs> I know she can understand you. <laughs> I, I must say, I'm, I'm ashamed, but I'm going to have to pass. Mrs. Lindsay? Do you, enter, uh, do you teach people how to do something? No. Eight down and two to go, Mr. Sir. Uh, Christina, is there any athletic or dexterity required in what you do? No. Nine down and one to go, Miss Francis. Is, do you wear something other than what you're wearing now when you're performing your service, Christina? Yes. Um. This, um, if, you, if you really mean, could the service be performed in what she's wearing now? No, that isn't what I mean, John, but it's all right if you want to put it that way. No, I meant, did she wear something other than her ordinary dress? Oh, that's fine. That's $10. <laughs> no more to go, which is all we were looking for. We beat them, Christina. Congratulations. She's Christina writes <laughs> advice to children in a newspaper column oh. for the Hutchinson News. <laughs> she uh, answers letters from young people her own age and from teenagers generally about parental problems. You know how they all have trouble with uh, the parents, don't, don't they, Christina? And she works for the Hutchinson News, which is uh, quite a newspaper, Bennett. You know, they got the... Um, got a Pulitzer Award, did you not, for the, your coverage of the uh, reapportionment issue in Kansas? Christina, what do you think of rock and roll? <laughs> I don't know. You don't know? See, that's how she writes the column, that's she gets the letters. <laughs> she says, uh, she's honest enough to say, I don't know. We're not going to get you in trouble. See, that's the trouble with Bennett. If he asks you that question, then you couldn't go home for a month if you told the truth, right? <laughs> well, we won't allow that to happen, but we will tell you it's been a joy having you with us, and thanks very much for coming to this. We'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, this... And now the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery challenger, for which you know the panelists have to be blindfolded. Are the blindfolds all in place, panel? Yes, sir. Yes, Good. Sir. Will you enter mystery challenger and sign in, please? panel, as you know, a different form of questioning. One question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise, and we will begin with um, Bennett Cerf. Would your name usually be found in the entertainment section of the newspapers? Yes. Yeah. Miss Francis? <laughs> Are you a performer in the theater? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Morgan? Are you currently employed in the Broadway theater? Yes. Yeah. Mrs. Lindsay? Are you in a musical on Broadway? No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. Are you in a play of uh, comparatively recent origin on Broadway? Yes. Miss Francis? Do you in this play uh, play a person of noble birth, a king? No. <laughs> Two down at eight to go, Mr. Morgan. Is uh, the play you're in a comedy? Yes. Mrs. Lindsay? Uh, are, you are the leading man? 
Yeah. Mr. Sir? Is it a play that has opened within the past two weeks? Yes. Yeah. Miss Francis? In the past two weeks? Uh, oh. Oh, tortured. I don't hear a sound. No, I, I'm going to pass. I can't think of anything but the lion and winter. Uh. A comedy in the last two weeks? You can't pass, because then it'll be my turn. <laughs> <laughs> a comedy in the last two weeks. Did you pass, Arlene? I did. I'm ashamed. All right, Henry, it's up to you. I happen to be passing at the time. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Lindsay? <laughs> I give up. I <laughs> Bennett, you better throw. I is it a play that could possibly have just opened tonight? Yes. Oh ho ho. Oh ho ho ho, oh, jolly oh, big. Uh, <laughs> could it be so the gentleman who played in Never Too Late recently? Paul Ford. Paul Ford. <laughs> That we've been able to do that. Oh, Three bags yeah. full, open tonight at the Henry Miller Theater. Oh, How long has the curtain been down? How would you do down? it? Uh, it came down at 9.30. Came down at 9.30. Well, it went up at 7.30. It went up early yeah. curtain. Well, needless to say, I know what, uh, at least if I, all the traditions and legends of the theater that I know about are true, you're waiting for those morning papers. Oh, yes. Interviews. Oh, yes. Well, we well you're a wonderful actor, Mr. Ford, no matter what happens. Oh, I you do know that. <laughs> The response was great, I can tell you that. Good. Well, I'm, I'm what does the but title the... mean? Well, what does three bags full mean? Yes, well, sir, uh, yes, sir. The, the three bags play a very important part in the play. Let's That's not like go into this too play. hard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, car carpet bags. Carpet bags. Oh, yeah. Good. Well, what is the old childhood rhyme? You know, da 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 three yes, bags. Sir, yes, sir, three bags, bags full. full. Have no. you any wool? Yeah. Have you any wool? Then you see they make carpets sheep. out of wool, and, and uh, <laughs> so there you are. The thing, of course, I guess, Paul, you hear it so often, but I must say none of us will ever forget the glorious days of, uh, of uh, Phil Silvers and, and Bill Coe. Oh, yeah. Uh, when you uh, played the uh, commanding officer, sir. I'm, uh, That's I, right. That's, uh, I was in the Army there for about five, five years. years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you retired. Well, oh. we got our fingers crossed. We hope you get the best notices that have been written this year in New York. Oh, thank thanks you. a lot for coming to see us. points panel, I think I owe you some congratulations, even though we did give you some rather rough periods tonight, and you've done rather well. We'll all be back after this. This is Lindsay again. It's been an honor to have you with us. Hope you enjoyed yourself. And Henry, good to see you there. Hope you come back again soon. Thank you very much. And good night, Miss Arlene Francis. Good night. Which is the most difficult game to play, this or I've got a secret? <laughs> this? No. Yeah. This. Yeah, this is much harder. Because, uh, on this panel, you, you've got to know something. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know we're glad we had you. Good night, Henry. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Good night, Arlene. Good night, Mrs. Lindsay. Good night, Mr. Morgan. Good night, Mr. Sir. Delightful, Sidney. Yeah. Thank and you. you don't have to know anything in this show because John Daly misleads you anyway. <laughs> Good night, John. Well, now, that certainly was said without gauze. <laughs> <laughs> something is spilling out, but I don't know what it is. I meant to say absent without gauze. Absent without <laughs> gauze. Well, that finishes him for the night and finishes the rest of us. And thanks to all of you for being with us on What's My Line. What's My Line is a CBS television network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Cotton. This is Johnny Olson speaking.